Hello. Welcome. As a deceiver, Satan attacks your mind so that you become ignorant of God's will. As a devourer, he attacks your body so that you break God's will. As a ruler, he attacks your will so that you disobey God's will. We continue our study on the tactics of the enemy. Today, we study Satan as the accuser. The Apostle John writes in Revelation 12:10, And I heard a loud voice in heaven, saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. Now let us assume a Christian does not take advantage of his victorious position in Christ. Suppose the Christian falls into sin. What happens? Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. You would think that Satan, once he has used his tools to get a person to sin, would be glad that the saint has fallen, and leave him alone to suffer the consequences. No, no, no. You see, Satan knows that once a saint has fallen, he or she would soon regret the sin, and go to God for forgiveness. Paul says, for godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death, 2 Corinthians 7:10. Satan cannot let that happen. He has to make double sure that the believer becomes miserable and has no desire to come before God. You have come across believers, who have committed some sin, maybe a very heinous sin. Even though they have confessed and repented of the sin, they are constantly feeling guilty about it. Let us see what strategy Satan uses to make the believer doubly miserable. Let us read Zechariah 3 1-7. Then the angel showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, with Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebukes you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord, who has chosen Jerusalem, rebukes you. Is not this man a firebrand snatched from the fire? Now Joshua was dressed in filthy garments as he stood before the angel. So the angel said to those standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, See, I have removed your iniquity, and I will clothe you with splendid robes. Then I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So a clean turban was placed on his head, and they clothed him, as the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua. This is what the Lord of hosts says, If you walk in my ways and keep my instructions, then you will govern my house and will also have charge of my courts, and I will give you a place among these who are standing here. What is Satan's target? Your heart and conscience. The scene we just read is similar to a courtroom. God is the judge. Joshua is the defendant. Satan is the accuser or prosecutor, trying to prove Joshua guilty. Now, Satan appears to have a case. Because Joshua is wearing filthy garments. And the high priest is supposed to wear clean clothes. When we break God's law, Satan moves in for the killer blow. He attacks our hearts and our conscience. When he was leading us into sin, Satan was whispering in our ears, you will get away with it. Now, he is shouting at us, you will never get away with this. Wait till your spouse, or co-workers, or church members hear of this. If they know what kind of person you are, they will throw you out. This is enough to make any Christian despair and feel miserable. What is Satan's weapon? Accusation. When Satan talks to you about God, he lies. But when he talks to God about you, he tells the truth. He has access to heaven. 
And there he reminds God about the condition of his saints. And you and I know about this accusation. Because we feel it in our hearts and conscience. So day, and night he is accusing the saints before God. You see what Abraham did, he lied about his wife. See what David did, he committed adultery and murder. See what Peter did, he cursed and lied three times. Judge him, judge him, judge him. It is important to know the difference between the devil's accusations and the Holy Spirit's conviction. A feeling of guilt and shame is a good thing. If it comes from the Holy Spirit convicting us of righteousness, this guilt and shame draw us to God for forgiveness and repentance. It seeks to bring you back into fellowship with God. But the guilt and shame that comes from Satan's accusations leads us to remorse, shame, and defeat, never to repentance. It only makes us want to withdraw from the fellowship. You feel helpless and hopeless. Judas listened to the devil's accusations after betraying Christ and went out to hang himself. Peter listened to the Spirit's conviction. He wept bitterly, and later came back into fellowship with Christ. When we listen to the devil's accusations, it leads to despair and hopelessness. That is when we hear believers say, I am too far gone for God's mercy. God will never take me back. What is Satan's purpose for accusing us? To bring an indictment by God's will. Satan wants you to feel guilty. He wants you to feel regret and remorse, but not repentance. He wants to keep accusing you. So that you keep your attention on yourself and your sin. Not on Christ and his power of forgiveness. A true conviction will lead you to Christ and freedom. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1 9. Therefore if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. John 8 36. Sometimes fellow believers can exacerbate the guilt and shame of a fallen believer. There is a time and place for disciplining a fallen brother or sister. But, when they repent, we are to welcome them back into fellowship, 2 Corinthians 2 6. Sometimes fellow believers refuse to welcome such a person back. This can affect the repentant person adversely. Some believers even entertain suicidal thoughts. What are our defenses? The interceding of the Son of God. It is true that Satan accuses us before God. But it is also true that Jesus Christ stands at the right hand of God to intercede for us. 1 John 2 1 says, My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So in the courtroom scenario, Jesus is the defense lawyer. He is there to defend Joshua, he is there to defend us. He points to his wounds, to say that your sin has been accounted for. The penalty has been paid. So the sinner is saved from God's wrath and punishment. Unconfessed sin in our lives is a foothold for Satan. He can use it as a basis for accusations. The longer we keep the unconfessed sin, the longer he accuses us. And the bigger the sin becomes in our lives. It becomes so big that it covers the face of God. And hides his grace and his love from us. Notice in Zechariah 3 that when the Lord rebuked Satan, Joshua's dirty garments are immediately removed and fresh garments put on him. Joshua is immediately restored to service. There was no probation period, immediate restoration into fellowship. Likewise, when we confess our sins. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy, Proverbs 28 13. 
When we confess our sins, the accuser has nothing to use against us. God bless you.